Hi, Girl Scouts. <clears throat> it's nice to see you all. I'm glad that you're joining us for uh, Inspiring Futures. And I think I recognize some names that are in the call tonight. So welcome back if you've been to one of our Inspiring Futures before. And for those of you who haven't been, I'm Katie Hurstein, and I'm the Program and Events Manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. And in my job, I get to work with um, connecting with some amazing professional women to invite them into Inspiring Futures so that Girl Scouts can hear about their their journey and um, you know what inspires them. And hopefully you'll be inspired too, and maybe you'll wanna do what they do someday. So um, we have a perfect partner that is uh, sponsoring Inspiring Futures and that's College Invest. So College Invest, they're a Colorado's college savings program. So it makes it easy to save for your education after high school. So it's basically a way of saying that you can, that they exist for just one reason, and that's to help you and your families put away money um, to save for your inspired future. So, and I started a college invest um, plan for my two daughters who are both Girl Scouts when we first moved to Colorado 10 years ago. And I now have a daughter going off to college in the fall. And so kind of glad that we put some money away into that savings plan to help pay for it. So because it is pretty big expense. Um, so it's basically the savings plans like a piggy bank where you'll be putting money in. The best part of it for your caregivers is that it's tax-free. So when you go to take that money out, you won't incur any taxes and you can use that money for after high school, for apprenticeships or um, trade schools or colleges across the country. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, we're going to hear a word from the CEO of um, College Invest, and she's going to welcome you to Inspiring Futures. Hi, I'm Angela Beyer, CEO of College Invest, and welcome to this episode of Inspiring Futures. Through Girl Scouts, you've learned that if you can dream it, you can do it. And here at College Invest, Colorado's Education Savings Program, we help you get there. And you're never too young to begin to imagine your inspired future. So how will you impact this world? Will you run your own business, invent some new technology, or maybe even discover a life-saving cure? But wherever your inspiration takes you, a College of a Savings Plan can help make your dreams a reality. Now, prepare to be inspired. Great, and some housekeeping items. So basically you're going to be recording the session so we can put it up onto our YouTube and our Inspiring Futures YouTube channel. Um, but when I do the editing, I make sure that I, I cover up any of the Girl Scouts faces so that, um, cause it's a public site. Um, so, but we would love to have you turn on your videos and chat, especially cause we're doing some improv tonight. Um, so we would love to interact with you. And uh, so feel free to do that now. Um, we'll just make sure that we, um, as I said, when we're recording it, we'll make sure that we don't have um, faces seen for your safety and protection. So we always start off with our Girl Scout promise and law. So we'll say it together if you want to unmute, feel free. If not, I'll just do it on my own, no problem. So on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law and the law. I will do my best. Do my best to be honest and fair, fair friendly, friendly and helpful, and helpful, helpful considerate and caring, courageous, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect, and to respect myself and others, respect, respect authority, authority, use resources, use resources wisely, make the world, make the world a better place, and be a, and be a sister, sister to every girl. Awesome. I, I had, when my troops were younger, we used to hug each other after that, be a sister to every Girl Scout, because we loved that line. <laughs> so next up, I want to welcome improv performer, Nicola Harris is here. And uh, we're so delighted that she's with us to interact with you and show you some improv skills and storytelling skills is gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we will welcome Nicole. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Um, and thank you all so much for having me. Um, my name is Nicole Harris, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I've been acting for over 20 years, and I do a lot of immersive theater and improv in Denver. Um, I teach improv, and I do probably about uh, two to three shows a week um, at Rise Comedy uh, in Denver. 
Um, so uh, that's a little bit about me. I'd love it if you could introduce yourself in the chat. Give me your name, maybe your favorite actor or actress or favorite movie or show. Um, and then when you give me that, um, I'm gonna ask you here, what's your favorite thing about that actor or actress or show is. So, and if you can join me, if you can uh, go off vid on, on video, I would love to see your faces. Okay, so today we're mostly gonna be talking about storytelling and improv. Um, does anyone know what storytelling is and why storytelling is important? Uh, why do people tell stories? And you can go, um, you can go on the mic and talk if you'd like to as well, since there's only three of us uh, or just a few of us here. Oh, hi, Athena. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, uh, why do you love SpongeBob SquarePants? Is it because it makes you laugh? <laughs> yeah, um, that's one of the things I love the most about improv, right? Laughter and connecting through laughter is really important. Um, yeah, yeah, um, I love that. It helps you get through hard times. Um, so uh, funny stories and, and ways that people persevere can help us get through our own um, difficulties or struggles that we might be facing. Um, one of the reasons that storytelling is important is also because it exposes us to other people's experiences and um, the stories we tell people about ourselves, right, is how people get to know us. So anything anyone knows about me, unless they were there with me, is because I told them a story about something from my life. Um, and so all plays and movies and TV shows are all stories to either make us feel an emotion like laughter or to get us think about to think about some kind of point of view. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to share a story um, that was done at the Moth. So the Moth is a national organization for storytelling, and they actually have a, a youth storyteller project. Um, and so I'm going to share a story from that with all of you. All right, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, give lots of love One to moment. Aliza. Sorry. Having technical difficulties. One moment. Here we are. Okay. Here we are. Osme! Thank you. Um, so I'm six years old and I'm in the first grade and I'm sitting at a table with my three best friends and we're all really similar. Um, we all wear the same clothes from the children's place that our moms buy us and um, we play in the monkey bars during recess and we play house underneath the playground at St. Catharines Park, which was behind our elementary school. And um, all of our names start with A. There is Anna, Amanda, Ashaya, and Eliza. And uh, we're working on self-portraits. And this is sort of an icebreaker project of the first grade. Um, and my teacher, Miss Harrington, presented it as like a way to get to know each other's faces. These were gonna be hung up on the wall. And I was really excited because we were on our third day of self-portraits and we were going to color them in finally. And I was super excited about this because um, my mom had bought me a coloring book over the summer and I learned how to color inside the lines. Um, and I learned all these, <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, and I learned all these really cool techniques for um, how to draw properly. And I was basically young Picasso and I was ready to show off my skills.
Nicole, we're having trouble hearing it. Although I can't hear it, but are, is anybody else hearing it? Are you all able to hear? Um, I couldn't hear it like a while, but I thought I wasn't supposed to hear it. So yeah, <laughs> no. let me try it's okay to try and replay it again. Yeah, I'll try to do it one more time. Yeah. Sorry Thanks. about that. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. It was it you could hear it at the beginning and then for some reason it cut out. Okay. I'm gonna just try a different link here and see if it shares. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I'm um, six I can't years see old it. and I'm in the first grade and I'm sitting at a table. You can't see it? Yeah. Oh, weird. It says I'm screen sharing. Are you able to see it, Katie? Katie? Oh, sorry, I just realized I was muted. Um, I, it's saying it's that um, you're starting to share your screen. So maybe it's a internet connection or something's just a little glitchy right now. Oh. Possibly. One moment. Uh, one moment, let me try. I'm gonna try to reshare again one more time. Okay. With my three best friends. Is it, and is it sharing? No, it still got the, do you wanna, um, can you put it in the chat and I'll see if I can get it up? Yeah, yeah, let me. Um. Oh, I shared it with with you personally. Okay, I'll, I'll let everyone. I wonder. I wonder what happened. There are a few of them. Uh, let me find the one that. Ladies and gentlemen, give luck. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Sorry, girls, we got you. Just one second. Just tech issues. Is this the one? Lots of love. Yes. Aliza Cosby. I believe so. Yes. Thank you. So I'm six years old and I'm in the first grade and I'm sitting at a table with my three best friends. And we're all really similar. Um, we all wear the same clothes from the children's place that our moms buy us. And um, we play in the monkey bars during recess and we play house and faithful playground at St. Catherine's Park, which is behind our elementary school. And um, all of our names start with A. There is Anna, Amanda, Shia, and Eliza. And uh, we're working on self-portraits. And this is sort of an icebreaker project of the first grade. Um, and my teacher, Ms. Harrington, presented it as like a way to get to know each other's faces. These were gonna be hung up on the wall. And I was really excited because we were on our third day of self-portraits and we were going to color them in finally. And I was super excited about this because um, my mom had bought me a coloring book The sound just stopped. Um, can I say something? I think when you I'm really excited because we were all here all and I was really excited because hmm. Helen. Yeah, well, I'm sorry that that's not working. So you you stopped um, hearing I, it. I could hear it when you played it. Yeah, okay. that second time you played it, we could hear. 
we were on our third day of self-portraits and we were going to color them in finally. And I was super excited about this because um, my mom had bought me a coloring book over the summer and I learned how to color inside the lines. Um, and I learned all these, <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, and I learned all these really cool techniques for um, how to draw properly. And I was basically young Picasso and I was ready to show off my skills to my friends. Um, and I knew this was an extremely special project because Ms. Harrington had brought out oil pastels um, and every table got one box and um, every box had one of each color. And I love oil pastels because I used to, they're really soft. And so I used to take them and pinch them between my fingers and like feel them melt into my skin almost. Um, and because there's one of each color in every box, uh, you have to be patient and wait for your color to not be used. And the color I wanted was being used. Um, I was ready to color in my face. And um, all of my friends had colored in their face peach. And since we're all the same girl, I figured I would use peach as well. So finally peach was available and I color in my face and I'm going slowly and I'm watching the oil pastel melt into the paper and I color inside the lines um, and it's beautiful and I look down and this self portrait this girl I had just drawn is exactly how I see myself it's like I'm looking into a mirror and I'm proud and I feel Miss Harrington my teacher um, looking over my shoulder and I get really excited because Miss Harrington loved it when people drew well um, and I was like she's going to say to me that she's going to hang it above her desk so that when people came in they knew that I drew this amazing portrait and I was getting ready for her to compliment me. Um, and instead, she looks down and she says, Aliza, that's not your color. And I'm confused by this because I don't understand how colors can belong to people. Um, and so I start panicking and I'm like, was I not supposed to use the oil pastels? Um, you know, did, did, I, did I do something wrong? What did I do wrong? I couldn't figure it out. And I couldn't find a way to ask her. And she didn't explain further. She just grabbed the oil pastel box. And started looking through it, um, didn't find the color she was looking for, and so she went to the crayon bin. And now every middle, every elementary school had this infamous crayon bin where it was like little bits and pieces of broken up crayon that were unwrapped and disgusting and like mixed together over years and years and years and never went away. And I never used crayons. I always used markers or color pencils or something. Um, but Miss Harrington went to the coloring, uh, to the crayon bin and she's rummaging through it and she pulls out this crayon and it's this nub of a brown crayon that's unwrapped and gross and Miss Jill Harrington hands it to me and she says, Lisa, this is your color. And still don't understand it because how can colors belong to people? Um, but I can't figure out a way to ask her and so I take it and she tells me to color in my face and so I do, um, but crayon and oil pastel don't mix together and they're not friends and they don't want to be on the same page together. And so I'm pushing in this crayon and I'm going in all different directions and trying to make it mix with the peach, but it's not doing it. And I'm coloring outside of the lines now and I've colored into my eye and my lips and now there's red on my chin and I'm panting and Anna, Shai and Amanda are all staring at me and I'm embarrassed. And when I'm done, I look down and I'm this grotesque monster that can't decide if it wants to be peach or brown. And I want to scream at Miss Jill Harrington, please do not hang this up. I, I, I'll do it again. I'll do it your way this time. But she grabs my self-portrait before I'm able to say anything and she puts it into the pile with all of my even toned, beautiful peach friends and it's hung up on the wall. And I go home that night and I ask my mom, why am I not allowed to be peach? And she explains it to me as well as another can to a six-year-old who's going through an identity crisis. Um, you know, yeah, you, you, I'm not peach and your dad isn't peach. And so she, she does her best, but I still don't understand it. And I don't want to ask her because I don't want to sound stupid because everyone else seems to understand this concept of color, but I cannot wrap my head around it. And so I put this idea on the shelf and I don't think about it again until the sixth grade when I'm in a new school and um, we're all asking each other questions like where did you go to elementary school and what's your favorite book and just trying to get to know, get to know each other a little bit. And this one boy comes up to me and he asks me, um, what race are you? Which might be a complex question. Some people they can't look at me and know what race I am. And I didn't know what race I was because I never really thought about it. Um, and so I'm trying to look for an answer. And I think back to Ms. Jill Harrington and that brown nubby crayon. And I tell him I'm brown. And he looks at me and he's so confused and he says, What do you mean you're brown? Brown isn't a race. And I I I find the words finally and they come up and this little six-year-old me inside is screaming and then now I'm screaming and I'm saying, who are you to tell me what I am? If I say I'm brown, then I'm brown and deal with it. Um, so this boy never spoke to me again. 
which is fun because I finally found the words and was able to stand up for myself. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that, Katie. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, give lots of. All right. Um, so, can we get everyone to come on video? All right. Thanks, Athena. Hi. How about PJ and Raina? Are you guys able to come on? Awesome. Thanks. Nice to see your face. Um, your faces. <laughs> um, what did you guys get out of that story? Was there anything that stood out to you? You can type it in the chat too if you'd like, but it's helpful for me to be able to see you. Yeah, stand up for yourself. Yeah, you felt bad for her. Um, see, like storytelling gets us to connect with each other, right? Um, and it exposes us to maybe things that other people go through that maybe you don't go through and it, it builds empathy and caring for other people, right? Yeah. So um, the fun thing about improv <laughs> moving forward is that we tell stories, but we tell stories together. Um, and so does anyone, do you all know what improv is? Yeah, it's like a play, except it's being made up on the spot. Um, and so lots of times it's really fun and it's funny and sometimes it can be really heartfelt and um, serious. Um, and it really just depends on what you build together. Um, improv is performed on stage as I do from week to week, but also people try improv in life. Um, to get more comfortable speaking in front of people, to come out of their shells, to connect with each other. Um, and so we're going to do some improv tonight. Um, and so I ask you to kind of give yourself over to the idea of just being silly and having fun together and uh, know that this is a no judgment space, okay? Um, we're going to do, we're gonna start with a getting to know you game, okay? Um, and I will start with it. And um, yeah, uh, I did improv in, or sorry, improv is done a lot in theater. Um, and I was introduced to improv uh, when I was in theater school in high school. So I'm, I bet you have Athena. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a game. And when it's your turn, you're gonna name something you like or something you don't like, okay? And the people who are watching, if you agree with that person, you're gonna get really, really close to the screen, like depending on like how much you agree, okay? But if you don't agree with that person, you're gonna get really far away, okay? Okay, based on like how much you don't like whatever it is they said, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna say, I like cats. And then if you like cats, get really close to the screen. Yeah, cat lovers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Katie and BJ did it. And Raina, yeah, you can give us a thumbs up if you agree. Or I don't know what your disagree will be. I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we'll just go by order of my screen. So um, Athena, why don't you share something? Okay. Um, I guess that I like equality and I um and I hate um you like equality. We can start with that. Equality. Mm -hmm. Let's see how close. <laughs> <we get. laughs> I wish I could get a screenshot of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. PJ, how about you? Either something you like or something you don't like. It can be like either. Candy in the chat. Oh, candy. Oh, I'm a big I'm candy fan. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan. Yeah. I'm a pretty big fan, but I try not to eat too much, so I didn't get too close. <laughs> All right, Raina. I like ice cream. Ooh, I'm, a, I'm an ice cream liker. I'm a middle of the road. Yeah, sometimes if I'm too cold, I don't want to eat too much of it, which is why I didn't get too close. Mm. But it looks like Athena and PJ are big ice cream likers. Yeah. 
Katie, do you have something? I have something that I don't like that most people, well, most adults do like is coffee. I do not like coffee. Ooh, I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm way back here. PJ's coffee. back there too. She's yeah. like, no, thank you. <laughs> Athena, have you had coffee? Are you, uh, uh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, PJ, why don't you share? She, she had done the candy. Yeah, we're we're still oh, doing okay. we're doing more. Oh, we're doing, doing yeah, more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. How about I like sleep? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good on that one. Icebreaker. Oh, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Athena. Do you want to share another one? Um, like going to the zoo. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a good one too. Oh, I'm in the middle because I always feel yeah. bad for the animals in the cages. Oh. <laughs> I work at the zoo. Actually, no, I, I volunteer at the zoo. Um, so, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, so it's have... like a thing called a zoo team where it's like a volunteer program, basically. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, that's really neat. Reina, do you have one more you want to share? Okay. I do not like pickles. Oh, I love pickles. Yeah, I'm kind of in here on pickles. <laughs> not too close, but not too far. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have one more, PJ? Art. Ooh, I love art. Mm. I'm a big art lover. Let's see. Ooh, my eyes <laughs> <laughs> Athena, too. Yeah, I saw that. And Reina with your heart. Cool. So that's an ice breaking kind of improv game of getting to know you where everyone just shares. And so now we're going to work on merging improv with storytelling and we're going to do word association. Okay. So word association goes where somebody says a word and the next person who goes um, will say uh, whatever word that makes them think of. Okay. It can be any word. So, for example, if, if it were just Katie and I were playing, I could say lamp. Light bulb. Um, uh, electricity. Mm. Spark. Um, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> See? Band-aid. So, yeah, band-aid. <laughs> See, and that's how word association goes, okay? So we're going to go based on the numbers that you have in front of your name. And so I'll start and then it'll go PJ, Athena, Reina, and Katie. All right. And we're going to do a couple of rounds of this. Um, so actually, because I just started the one with Katie, I'm going to let PJ start this next one. Just say any word at all, PJ. Um, art. <laughs> yeah. And then Athena, it's your turn. So do I like say a word associated with it? Yeah, yeah. whatever you thought of when she said art. Um, fun. <laughs> um, colors. Um, rainbow. Um, sunny day. Good weather. <laughs> And then Athena. Okay. Um, abstract. 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 Ooh. Yes. Picasso. Picasso. Um. Famous. Um. <laughs> Ariana Grande. <laughs> Singing. Yeah. That's you, Athena. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what you go. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you thought of when she said singing, there's no wrong answer. Uh, sing. Okay. <laughs> okay, she said sing. Um, koala. Oh, tree. Um, 
uh, squirrel. Nuts. Um, fluffy tail. <laughs> <laughs> Raina, you're, Raina, yours up yeah. next. Yeah. Over the hedge. Oh. Over the hedge. Um, house. House. Um, family. We'll do one more round. Um, mother. Um. Uh, father? <laughs> <laughs> Little brothers? <laughs> Little sisters. Aww. <laughs> I love that. We can end there. And what are the themes you guys think of the words that we brought? Like, as we went along, we had some themes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I know one theme that I saw was art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Movies, yeah. Weather was another one. Mm -hmm. Family. And family, yeah, yeah. Um, and we kind of all moved along those themes as a group as we were building off of each other, um, which is kind of what improv does. Uh, we build off what we're given to each other. Like I didn't know what word someone was going to say that was gonna take me in another direction than maybe the word I was thinking of before that, right? Um, so with that in mind, yeah, kind of like banana phone. <laughs> um, with that in mind, we're gonna tell a one word story. And um, let's see, just to change up the order, can we go backwards from five? So it would go Katie, Raina, Athena, PJ, and me. Mm -hmm. All right, when we tell our stories. And how this goes is you, we are going to just do one word at a time as we tell um, our stories. So if it was just me and Katie, I might go once. Upon a time. There. Was. Um, ants. Crawling. <laughs> um, up. Side. Down. <laughs> I was thinking. Right. Up, they were crawling down. upside down upside down. Up, yeah, or up the, yep, yeah. the um gutter. Okay. And from there we would continue our story. All right. All so, right. so I get to start? Yes. Okay. My beginning word is yesterday. I that's you next. Yeah. Um, I went to, um, school, even though, and you can keep yourselves off mute for this since it just pops around. Mm -hmm. So Raina, you're at next to, after, even though mm -hmm. it was. Sunday. Ooh. My sister is uh, um 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 any word. My sister is my my all right. Said a uh, by B Y. Oh, bye. My sister is by my school. She loves drawing animals. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so. So what we what we did is we did a couple of sentences. We did that we went to school and um, our sister lives by the school and she loves, was it drawing? Is that what we said? Drawing. So on a Sunday. Yeah, on a Sunday. <laughs> oh yeah, we went to school on a Sunday. So 
what I want us to think about as we um, do this next little round is connecting the sentences together. So um, to make a story. So if the beginning was, I went to school on a Sunday, the middle might be either what I did at school or who I saw at school or, or continuation of the story from the first sentence. So we're telling a story um, with each sentence as they build upon each other, okay? So um, we'll start again and we'll go one through five this time, okay? Yeah. So um, I'll start it with there. Was. Me? Mm -hmm. Okay. A. Huge. Dog. The. Dog. Um, went. Happily. Uh, happily away. <laughs> because. He. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking about something. Uh, he was. Okay, because he was. And then Raina. Playful. And do I finish, have to finish this sentence? Um, and then I, so we have once there was a huge dog, the dog went happily away because he was playful. And okay. so you start another one. And that, OK, I wasn't sure if I was so the fifth person had to finish it. OK. Um, hmm. Rufus. <laughs> um, came upon a. Turtle. Raina. Chew toy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Katie. That. Squeaked. <laughs> Loudly. Um, um, squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then Raina. It was. Um, Saturday. And. And a um bus. Okay, it was Saturday, and he. So then, what was it? What was the next thing? Oh, and he went. Okay. Raina, that's you. This is where we're at so far. And, um, outside. Mm. Okay. Keep going. Then we'll do one more sentence. So finally. Mm. Good word for the last sentence. Uh, am I up next? Yeah. Okay. Finally, um, Rufus. And then that's you, PJ. Went. And he won swimming. <laughs> Raina. In a mud puddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 
that's our story that we just made up um, together, one word at a time, which is kind of how um, it works when you're building things together. Nobody knew what the person in front of them was going to say, right? And so you might have had an idea, but it got changed when somebody else said something. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to try one more story, except, and you guys were already doing great at this, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a line at a time. Oh, of course, Raina. Um, so each of us will actually do a whole sentence and we're going to try to tell, again, tell a story. So listen to the sentence that the people say before you, because you want to connect what you're saying to the story that we're telling as a group. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, uh, so I will start it. Um, and I'll start it with, there once was a castle. And then it's you. Yep, yeah. PJ. And I land far, far away. Athena, you're up next. And he, and at what? So there, there was, once, go ahead. There oh, once yeah. was a castle in a land far, far away. I'll, I'll type up each sentence. Okay. okay. So there was a very handsome Prince Charming. <laughs> Raina, you're next. Um, but unfortunately, he was invisible. Ooh. But he did like to eat bananas. He would leave his peels all over the castle. The castle's residents thought it was haunted. But the princess soon knew that it was a prince that went and mysteriously went away a couple years ago. Raina, it's your turn. Um, luckily, the princess had a pet monkey who loved bananas. Okay. Um, oh. I'm next, right? Uh, the princess who had a monkey that loved bananas. The princess's dog did not get along with the monkey. One time when the dog was trying to run after the monkey, he tackled the prince. The prince then magically turned back to normal. <laughs> Athena, you're next. Oh. Uh, I don't have to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got um, um, okay, since I'm like a huge fan of romance, I want to leave it at like a romance ending. Okay, Ooh. so let me see what you wrote. Okay, that's what turned back to normal. So the princess found him, and then they lived happily ever after in the end. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely story! Awesome, awesome. great job, you guys. Um, so that was a fun story. I love the idea of the invisible prince leaving banana peels all over the castle. Um, <laughs> you guys have such wonderful imagination and creativity um, to tell. I mean, I would watch that story on a stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thanks for, for sharing and having fun. Yeah, luckily the dog had magic slobbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so that's kind of how improv works, um, even though it, it's simplified by doing one line after one line, when you're playing characters, you're each giving each other a line um, and you're and you're creating a story as characters together. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So when you are um, twice a week when you're doing, is it typically the same people that come and do it together with you? Or do you have new people that come in and try it? And So I'm on three teams and we, um, we have our own shows. So I do one where we play games. I do another one where we tell stories and then we do improv based on the stories that we tell. So there's a lot of different kinds of improv. And then I have another one where we sing and we do a musical and oh. we do a whole play together as part of our show. Um, and so it's really fun, the different kinds of things that you can do with improv. Um, every Thursday night at the theater, um, anyone can come and play. And so what's also fun about improv is that the way that communities work is um, that it's very open and um, you could have somebody you don't even know come and create something completely different and new. Um, together and that's how you get to know someone and it's really fun yeah oh that yeah. sounds really fun yeah oh so, yeah and uh, girls in, in your schools do you have any sort of acting groups or stuff that do improv at school I think one of you said that at school you do plays but no not no like improv clubs or you know things like that nope yeah huh. well you can start one are you guys in high school or are you in middle school I'm in junior high. Junior high. Yeah, because I um and Athena's in theater group outside of school. Yeah, because I've got two daughters in high school and um it's kind of neat that you just need to find, at least here in, in Douglas County, you just need to find a teacher or an adult that will help out with your club and you can get a um a club started. So you can think about that in high school. If you, you once you get to high school, if you might want to start an improv club, you can get uh, take um, Nicole's tips and get a group going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, in Denver, we actually have a few high school improv groups and they perform and it's really fun. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And it's kind of neat that you could do the icebreaker kind of games and get to know some people in high school, you know, which might be different people that you were in middle school with because then you're all all together and meeting new people and you can do some icebreaker games and an improv group yeah cool. it's it's really a fun way to kind of break the ice um with no like pressure mm -hmm. so. yeah cool awesome well thank you so much that was a lot of fun hopefully yeah, girls you had fun and um oh and um also um nicole and i had talked before about how you can do this with your family um you know and just do some games around the dinner table and you know, just do, you could do the stories, you know, sort of like, okay, dad starts and, um, you know, you do one at a time or something like that, or, you know, you could just, you can be creative, right, Nicole, and just make it up along the way. We're yeah. going to play a game and here's the rules. <laughs> yeah, it can be really fun. It can be a fun road trip game as well. Um, or if you're, if you're at a restaurant with your family, um, you can make up stories about where somebody might be going, you know, maybe you can start a story about somebody being late to something or, um, yeah, um, just use your imagination to um, create stories about the things happening around you. Right. So that's a good tip. I, I'm driving a long eight hour drive with my family tomorrow. So I think I might spark that uh, in the car. <laughs> good idea. Yeah. yeah. Good um, idea. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Um, here we go. So this is the Inspiring Futures patch, which you can put on the back of your vest or sash. Oh, it, sash. it didn't show up. It's sharing your um, program instead. Oh, thank you. Yeah. There. There you are. Okay. So that's the patch. Mm -hmm. um, so the middle is the main patch and then... <clears throat> 
the rockers around and um, PJ, I recognize you from the toy one. So you probably have the entrepreneur one already. This will be the life skills rocker. So um, there's a survey that that will be emailed out to your caregiver. And in that survey, you'll you can fill in your address and, you know, which um, if you've already got the main patch, then you don't need that one and which one you'll need, et cetera, et cetera. And I will mail those out to you. So um, your caregiver can look out for that email that will be coming shortly. And I'll be, um, you know, editing the recording and I'll be going up on YouTube so that you know, also any girls that missed um, today's session, they can watch it on our YouTube channel. And I just also just wanted to thank Girl Scouts of Colorado and College Invest, our sponsor, for um, doing this series. And it's just been so fun to meet all these different professional women. And we've got lots coming up in the future that um, you can take a look at the calendar on our Girl Scouts of Colorado website or, or your caregiver can do that and, and tell you who's coming up in the future. And uh, just to thank Nicole so much, this was just fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I think I wanna come and watch you. And uh, Amanda is um, someone who works at Girl Scouts of Colorado is a friend of Nicole. So I can see your, you and Amanda. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun together. So thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, good night girls. And thank you so much for coming. All right, good night girls. It was nice meeting you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, it was a lot of fun. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs>